My new favorite thing that we have ever made is now available for pre-sale. More info at the end of the video. Oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodle-allies. Rebecca Parham here. Cozy little scene, isn't it? Just about the only thing it's missing is a dog curled up in front of that fire. Really makes me think about the best and possibly naughtiest dog my family ever had. Let's talk about the legend himself, Charlie the Basset Hound. For those of you who have never had the privilege of owning one of these floppy potatoes, let me clue you in on the main breed characteristic. Basset hounds are the embodiment of stubborn. People claim that they're stupid, but you see, that's the deception. Basset hounds know exactly what you want from them, but they're also smart enough to know that the world isn't gonna end if they ignore you. And that was Charlie. If the rules didn't serve him, he didn't listen. I wish I had the confidence of this dog. If his life were a classic hero's journey, he always skipped that step where you're supposed to refuse the call to adventure. Let's say you could speak dog and you're the NPC telling him, hey, you see that treacherous path over there? Don't go there, big danger, you'll die a thousand deaths. And he'd be like, well, that sounds like somebody who doesn't want me to have fun, screw you. No ominous warnings of the dangers ahead, we're gonna keep him from Mount Doom. And speaking of forbidden paths, I lived on my family's ranch back in the day and the land was divided into two pieces, 10 acres fenced off around the house for the dogs and the rest for our horses. There was one opening in the fence for vehicles to cross, but we put a cattle guard there to keep the horses and the dogs on their own side. And it worked perfectly. That is until we got Charlie. He, with his big basset brain, figured out that he just needed to lay flat on the ground like a pancake and army crawl his way across the cattle guard. We would constantly find him in the pastures just puttering around or hanging out with the horses and the barn cats. One time my mom saw him across the fence chilling by our duck pond and she yelled, Charlie! And for some reason, when he heard that, he looked upwards towards the sky like God was calling him. Searched the sky and everything like the staircase to the pearly gates was gonna appear before him. I mean, all dogs do go to heaven after all. Fun fact, Rachel was the one who named him Charlie, but I started calling him Charlie Barkins after the main character in that movie. And it stuck. He was Charlie Barkins to the whole family until the day he died. He also frequently went by Basset Hound and Da Bass. We call dogs by their breed a lot in our family. Hey German Shepherd, hello Labrador. How you doing cattle dog? Speaking of cattle, this one time mom was across the cattle guard putting the horses in the barn for the night. When she was ready to walk back to the house, she spied a very large buck intently staring her down about 30 yards away. She thought to herself, okay, he is big, and he could do some real damage if he decided to get territorial right now. I'm just gonna start walking away. She headed in the opposite direction of the buck, but when she was almost to the cattle guard, something was coming up fast behind her. Oh boy, this is it. I'm gonna have to fight Bambi. Here we go. Turns out that heavy galloping was just Charlie trying to race by mom and beat her to the cattle guard, possibly to avoid a scolding. Though mom definitely had a few choice words to shout at him as he ran back to the house. Charlie wasn't just a ranch dog, oh no no, he was a corporate professional. Mom, dad, and Rachel would take him to the family business all the time where he did very important work, like napping and sunbathing and walking from room to room hounding people for love and affection. There was a girl who worked at our office named Emily and she would keep snacks and lunch items at her desk. Well, one day when the whole office was in their morning meeting in the boardroom, Charlie came waddling in carrying something in his mouth. He waited until he had the whole room's attention before setting the item down and looking at everyone expectantly. That's when Emily shouted, Oh my God, is that my peanut butter? While everyone was busy in the morning meeting, Charlie had rummaged through her food bag she left behind her desk and stolen her jar of peanut butter. Knowing full well he couldn't get into the good smelling jar himself, he brought it to the humans to open it for him. Acting like he totally didn't just do something naughty. Charlie, you're fired. Thing is, that wasn't the only time he did something like that. At the ranch, we kept all the dog treats in the pantry, a place Charlie knew he wasn't allowed to go. But if someone mistakenly left the box of milk bones on the floor of the pantry, he would go in, take just one, find the nearest human, and lay the treat down in front of you to ask for permission to eat it. It was almost like he was saying, hey, I can have this, right? Well, I guess you can, since you asked so politely. Rachel tells me that he one time did this with a whole unopened box of treats, just pulled it from a grocery bag and laid it at her feet, expecting her to open it. I would 
would think any normal misbehaving dog would just take the box somewhere and tear into it, but not Charlie, no no, such things were beneath him. Why should he get his paws dirty when one droopy-eyed stare makes every human do anything he wants? Oh my god, that face was so cute, I would burn down all of society for him. So one time, Charlie needed surgery, ironically, on his stomach. Probably shouldn't have eaten and destroyed so many things you weren't supposed to! Rachel went to go pick him up at the vet after the surgery, but when she entered the lobby, she heard a very mournful howl coming from the back. And it just kept going, even as they let her into an examination room to wait. Oh god, that's him, isn't it? Charlie, that's enough! Yep, it's him. Poor baby was so unhappy coming out of anesthesia that he howled from the moment he woke up until they brought him out to Rachel. A different time, he needed to be put under for a series of tests, and when we brought him back to the ranch, he wandered over to my dad's garden, sat down, and just stared off into space in that spot for hours. I called him to come back in a few times, but dude was on another planet at that point. Didn't even notice my presence until I physically touched him. Must've been having one hell of a trip. A few more of Charlie's mini quirks. Look at this, whenever he was just chilling, he would lie with his hind legs out to the side like this, or stretched backwards like this. We'd walk by and call him Superman when he did that. He was also a summer bum because he loved jumping up on the pool furniture and soaking in the rays like he was getting a tan. Only thing he was missing was a coconut drink with a little umbrella. Another thing he loved was when I wore long skirts because he would treat me like his own personal tent. And every single time, he would peek out from underneath it with the cloth draped over his head like this. I'm pretty sure he was fully aware of how cute he was. And finally, he could always tell when I was having period cramps and thought he was helping by lying on top of me. I appreciate the concern, Charlie, but I don't think your treatment's working. But then again, that always was Charlie's favorite place, on your lap. Now all of these stories were just the tip of the Charlie iceberg. Trust me, I would love to make another one of these videos, so please give me every reason to. I wanna keep the legend alive. Thank you so much for Charlie? Now available for pre-sale, the official Let Me Explain Studios premium sketchbook. This is my absolutely favorite thing we have ever made. The cover is so pretty, the first few pages feature behind the scenes art from my videos, and in the corner you have a little flipbook of Toon Becca dancing. These are professional qualities, the pages are so silky smooth, it feels like butter to draw on them, so whether you're a seasoned professional or an absolute beginner looking for your first sketchbook, you can pre-order one of these by clicking the link in the description below.